The book draws on stuff we've known for a long time from ri ancient writings and this archaeology, some sites that have been excavated more, you know, nearly 200 years ago. But perhaps one of the things that's really changed the subject a lot is the way that archaeologists and historians are now working with biologists and so on. So one of the things that would have been totally different if I written this book 10 years ago would have been uh, the way in which disease history is now being written into human history, begin to get some sense about how uh, once you do create a network of cities that are connected by trade and travel, it provides a kind of framework across which diseases can move. And once you've got populations of people not very well fed pushed together, these become perfect incubation points for diseases. And of course, this is fantastically relevant today. We're watching the vulnerability of a super urbanized global civilization more connect ever before. It wasn't like that exactly in the ancient world, but we're beginning to get there. And it's because people are now able to actually identify the pathogens from archaeobotanical evidence that we can do that. When I set out to write the book, I I thought I had a roughly good idea about the big world picture. I've been working on the Greek and Roman world and the Etruscans and their neighbours for a long time. And about 20, 30 years ago, I taught on a class which involved world history. And I thought, I shouldn't think it's changed much since then. And then as I began to read about you know, what's been detected with, with, um, with laser versions of radar in the Amazonian forest, I began to see the new dates from very early stuff around. I began to realize that what I thought was maybe four or five civilizations all appearing, uh, there's actually dozens of them. And so we're finding them in the unsuspected place, finding early urbanization the early in unsuspected places. We're beginning to spot the failed experiments too, because people clearly tried to build cities hundreds of times, and often they last a generation or no more because they're very fragile and people don't always design these things well. So we're beginning to get a sense of how many false starts there were. And that's completely new as well. So it's now become much more of a global story and not so much a sort of you know, Egypt, Mesopotamia, uh, Greece, and then somewhere off to the East China doing something we don't understand very well. Now it's much more a sort of a global story of the common human experience in the Holocene. We're just beginning to find out about some urban civilizations for which the traces are hardly visible on the ground. Uh, perhaps the most exciting new discoveries in the valley of the Amazon, which people had traditionally imagined was sparsely populated forest until the arrival of um, the Spaniards and others in the 15th century. Uh, it turns out that underneath the trees you can find traces of settlements and uh, field boundaries and ditches and so on, which all created, and then once people visit these places, having picked them out through GPS, they find traces of human artifacts that are hundreds of years earlier than that. Uh, when, what led it to, to appear, what led it to collapse, we, we don't know that yet, but it's clearly something beginning. Closer to home, urbanism has two starts in the Mediterranean. Um, it starts in the, in the Bronze Age, just in the eastern end, in Crete and um, Cyprus and um, around the Aegean. And this all begins to happen in the middle of the second millennium BC. And then it collapses completely in about 1200 BC, and you then have a period of maybe n nearly 500 years where there's virtually no cities there, only Cyprus survives. And they've, they're doing other things, and then when cities appear again, in what we call the beginning of the archaic period, uh, they look really different. They're no longer built around a palace with a king and a priest and so on, and it's now much more about the development of citizenship. And there's a similar thing happens in the Indus Valley in, in North India, where cities appear in the Bronze Age and sub you know, five really big ones in this huge area that's now on the borders of Pakistan and Northwest India. And they last for centuries and then they just vanish completely. And when cities appear again in India, it's hundreds of years later and it's actually over in the Northeast India, not Northwest. So we're beginning to see these sort of early but now lost versions.